and mentally and physically exhausted, he fell asleep and slept for twelve unbroken hours. So, very nicely and wisely, he wrote me another letter, asking me to tell you, who heard the first aspects of this wonderful working of the law, not to do it, say you do it in love. For you may be not in that which you thought you would have helped, and got lost in something up to now, for God is love. And if you do it in love, you can't go wrong. You will do it purely and you will disengage yourself as easily as going in and out of an open door. So that is on this level. On the highest level, you will know exactly where you stand, this side, tomorrow night, if it doesn't come tonight, if you dare, I can't say that all of you here will dare. My friend said to me that the two cousins of his, raised as he was a Catholic, then thought he was bad seeming, it was all in the dream, and said he to himself, and he didn't want you to them, had I been told the same story of Jesus Christ a few years ago, I would have felt as you feel now. He didn't criticize them. He knew how they felt, but he didn't tell them that he, a few years ago, would have thought the same thing. He thought it to himself. But now, having heard it, having applied it, and worked it on this level, he knew that this power was Jesus Christ. I have told him scripture. My friend, who told the story, he was actually quoting the 24th verse of the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, that the spirit that is called Jesus Christ, that this is the power and the wisdom of God, personified as a man. But you're a man, aren't you? Well, the power is in you. It's being formed into the image of God. But that power operates through the agency of man. And when it's formed in you, so it's a perfect image of God, well, that shell is broken, and you come out. But you still remain here in this world, playing your part until that moment in time when the veil is taken off, and it's taken off for the last time. So everyone will actually be incorporated into the one body. So I met it when I wrote it in that little tiny pamphlet of mine. He breaks the shell. That we are gathered one by one to be united into a single man who is God. What a shock to the whole vast world when my friend saw an enormous crowd, almost like a pyramid, because were I at the top, and he at the bottom, it couldn't really be an arena, as he described it, this great amphitheater. How could it be? I should be down at the bottom, addressing the crowd. But here, I was at the top, the apex, addressing the crowd almost like a great pyramid. And they were all seated, and not a seat to be had. But only a few would rise, only a few had the courage to claim I am that. Three weeks ago when I made this statement, there was a chap here, he brought a family of seven, his wife and children and all. And he made a date to see me the following Tuesday. It was a Friday night that I made the statement. And he had a date to see me on Tuesday. That was made before the lecture. He not only did not keep the date, he hadn't told me, he hadn't written me, not a card. He, seven of them, all together who came, they were symbolic of the crowd who cannot take it. He had this concept of Jesus Christ as some being who lived and died 2,000 years ago. And hope to see him come in some strange way, there may be a glorified man, but he wants to see a little man all glorified with life to save his world. That's not Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. <coughs> Buried in every child born of woman. And everyone has to go through the same unfolding word of God. That remains forever. Nations come and go. Empires come and therefore. Everything comes and go. And we're just like the grass. And 
all the flights of love. But the word of God, which is the gospel, the story of the gospel, remains forever. It unfolds in the individual. And so, practice the law on this level, that you have become familiar with it, and have faith in Jesus Christ, who is the power and the wisdom of God. So you start on this level. And then, that something begins to unfold within you. And it unfolds in the automatic, involuntary manner, in the form of a dream or a vision. You go back and you search the Bible, <coughs> and you find in Scripture the passage that you have experienced. And you're exactly where you stand in the unfolding drama. You come to the end of revelation when you stand in the presence of infinite love that is God, the risen Christ, to incorporate it. And then you go through telling your story as best you can of the risen Christ, whether the believer or not, you tell it. Then you come to the grand series of events, and there are eight. There are eight. And eight is the symbol of the complete resurrection. And you start with the crucifixion. If we have been united with him in a death like him, we should certainly be united with him in a resurrection like him. What's the distinction in ten? We have been united with him in a death like him. We shall be united with him in a resurrection like him. So here, that's the beginning of it all. We all have been united with God. He chose us in himself before the world was. So all are crucified with him. All. He's crucified under his arm. This is the cross. The next is the entombment. That's the second. <coughs> and you are entombed within your own skull. That's where you're entombed. That is Golgotha. That's the great sepulchre where Jesus Christ is buried. <coughs> The third is the resurrection. On the third day, the third came up out of the earth, out of the deep, the earth came. So three is a symbol or a number of resurrection as eight is. Eight is the grand one. So on the third day, you resurrect. You awaken within your skull to find yourself in two. And then you come out. And the coming out the symbol of your birth from above is present in the form of a little infant dust in spot and cell. That's number four. Number five, the discovery of David. You find David. And David is the son of God. Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And you find him, and he calls you father. Then and only then you know who you really are. It's only God of this world. And you know, even though you're limited by the flesh, you exactly who you are. But while you wear it, it's like a grand pianist who could sit at the greatest instrument in the world. If you put a mid upon it, what would he do with the instrument? The greatest technician in the world, seating down at any grand piano that is beautifully tuned, everything is perfect. And he is the master master, but covering with a mist and asking to play. So well, this is the mist that covers God. This is the veil. And so you find David, and you find him on the inside of your own being. And he calls you father, and you know who you are. And here is a wonderful being that he feels you as God the Father. So that is the fifth. And then the sixth is the tearing of the curtain of the temple, which is your own body, from top to bottom, and severing you in two. And at the base of that spine of yours, the blood of God, the golden liquid living light, and you know it is yourself. You fuse with it, and this is the self, and up you go, in certain times for all fulfilling scripture. And then the eighth is the seal of the Holy Spirit upon you by the descent of the dove. And you do exactly what you're told in Scripture. When the dove returns to the ark, 
He puts out his hand.